The government's announced an immigration reset that'll mean significant changes to how employers can engage international workers. But has it struck the right balance? Here to discuss is Green Party co-leader Marama Davidson. Morena, to you. Morena, what do you Green think? Game. Has the government got it right? Uh, not quite. Not for, um, to our opinion, the Green Party. And what the impact of the immigration reset is essentially um, setting up a two-tiered system. And, you know, the impact on that, unfortunately, upholds um, quite a bit of discrepancy and discrimination that New Zealand, unfortunately, has, has not fixed for quite some time. Uh, and so, you know, the differences between uh, who is able to gain pathways to residency, um, including in the current reset, um, is an area of concern for us because it shows that uh, the um, white countries, the fair-skinned countries, the northern sort of American and European countries are far more likely and far more favoured to be able to seek pathways to residency because they're also traditionally the far higher earning um, of immigrants who come here. And those who are, who are in predominantly the, the far lower paid um, areas of work are predominantly from darker skinned um, countries, for example, Filipino and Indian nationals, make up a huge proportion of low wage migrants. And, and Bernadine, if I can just give an example out of that, um, only about 50 out of 14,000 or so Indian nationals um, on temporary visas earn 200% of the median wage. And that's the sort of threshold that the new reset um, has set. Uh, this is compared to about 300 or so of around 3,600 3, uh, from people from Great Britain. So, you know, this is a long-standing uh, discrimination and this, uh, this reset actually continues that. Is it not indicative of the jobs and the skill set that people are chasing as to what jobs they're wanting to come into New Zealand to do? What changes would you like to see then? Well, actually, thank you for asking, because what it is indicative of is an up, uh, <coughs> excuse me, long-standing discrimination that we are valuing certain jobs and not valuing others. So aged care, um, who doesn't want our older generation to be uh, taken care of and to for those workforces to be valued for the important job that they're doing for our older generation. So if we set residency pathways based on salary, we aren't taking into account that migrants, fair skin migrants from um, white countries, um, you know, will likely have easier access to criteria. But if it comes to what should we have a look at, well, I really want to highlight the the tangata whenua and Māori women leadership are, um, more precisely that has been raising up what would actually happen if we had a TDT-centred immigration scheme and what sort of values are we likely to see, values that, um, you know, really highlight our responsibility to manaki, to care for people who come to Aotearoa and values around aroha and what are the sorts of essential I guess, jobs and workforces we are going to need for a caring Aotearoa and a tiriti-centred uh, approach would actually have tangata whenua right at the start of the decision-making table to help us reframe what do we actually value and care about? Do we want to make sure we are not setting up um, and furthering unfortunately far too common racist narratives about who comes here and what countries they come from. So just to clarify, your reaction is this reset, any change you feel is more race-based than anything else. You're saying it is not a fair system for different countries. It has never been for, for some time. And, you know, that's really unfortunate. New Zealand could actually be a far more... Um, value-based, progressive um, uh, country. Immigration New Zealand records themselves show the impact um, ends up being race-based, the impact and who we end up... Like, probably if we have a look at some of our language, I think, too, Bernadine, I think um, we we use the, the language of expat for migrants from sort of North America, across Europe, um, South Africa... Um, we use the language of um, 
you know, and, and unskilled and skilled is another way that we sort of look at. Look but at do we not but need skilled... We've got such a labour shortage. Yes, do we not need yes. skilled workers? Yes, and have a look at what who we call skilled and who we don't. Why is aged care not considered a skill to be valued, as an example? Why, why are we not valuing the caring work in our community that sets up a system for enduring care for different groups of people. So that's an example of the language that we use. Migrants from uh, all countries, including from the Philippines, which has been highlighted by First Union, are skilled, highly skilled. And they talk about the Filipino community here, for example, talk about they're highly skilled because they're hammered um, by all the other countries. And so they're used to living with those adversities and dealing with and working through those adversities. And so why do we, we call some skills valued and other skills and other predominant workforces we label as unskilled? That's deeply unfair and it, it does uphold an inhumane narrative. You make a fair point there. Uh, it is open to interpretation, isn't it? Uh, we are out of time, unfortunately. Greens co-leader Marama Davidson. Morena, thank you for your time this morning. To